Hi everybody, welcome to this very brief presentation. We're going to briefly discuss phylum hemichordata and then get into some of the invert organisms that exist within phylum chordata. So first up, the evolutionary importance. Why are we even talking about this? Well, first of all, echinoderms, hemichordates, and chordates are all most likely derived from a common ancestor. That's due to their deuterostome development, which if we think back to our embryology unit, that's where the blastopore forms into the anus first, then the mouth forms later. So far, we've mainly focused on protostome development, which the mouth is what forms first. With that being said, hemichordates themselves are kind of halfway to being a chordate, but they're a little more advanced than an echinoderm. So the name itself means half chord. And they have three body segments, and these are different than segments we've discussed in the past during arthropoda. So in this case, the body segments are the proboscis, the collar, and the trunk. And if you look down here in this picture, you'll see those three different structures labeled. So the collar and the proboscis are very close to the head region, and then the trunk is the rest. And honestly, it looks very similar to an earthworm. If you remember, the clitellum was closer to the mouth region. They're... They do have some other structures that is, makes them the reason why they're hemichordates. So they have ciliated pharyngeal gill slits. And as we'll see in a minute, those gill slits are an important characteristic of chordates as well. They do, however, have an open circulatory system. So they don't have that developed heart and blood, and blood vessels. They do have a complete digestive tract, so a mouth and an anus. There's two openings. They also have a dorsal nerve cord, which can be hollow sometimes depending on the species. And two major examples here are acorn worms and pterobranchs. Now, if you look down at the bottom here, the pterobranch is right there. There's an example. And then the acorn worms, there's two of them here. And over here, this just gives you a little bit more information about pterobranchs and their structure. So within this phylum, there are two classes that I want you to be responsible for knowing about. So first is class Enteropneusta. This means intestine for breathing. And these are found in these U-shaped burrows that they form along the sandy shorelines. They're not very far off shore. And they have that proboscis that's used for feeding and it's covered with mucus and cilia and it helps attach particles to it that they eat. And the example here is the acorn worm, like you see pictured up top. Class pterobranchia, on the other hand, means wings or feather gills, and these are the opposite in terms of where they live. They live on deep ocean floors in these tubes, and the tubes are typically in colonies. And they also, though, do have cilia, and that's how they help transport food to their mouth. And there's really only around 30 species. I'm not going to make you learn specific names, so we're just going to call them the pterobranchs. So now we have phylum chordata, or just some chordate characteristics that you see. There are lots of things that chordates all have in common, but you'll notice five black stars on your screen. A combination of these five things have to be present at some point in development for an organism to be classified as a chordate. So those five things are a notochord and some sort of dorsal tubular nerve cord, those pharyngeal gill slits, which I mentioned with the hemichordates, a post-anal tail at some point in development, which you're probably thinking like, whoa, really? Even humans? Yep, even humans have some sort of post-anal tail during development. You also have something called an endostyle or a thyroid gland. So those are the five things that make up present in the development, make up chordates. Chordates also have some other things in common, such as bilateral symmetry, that deuterostome development, a complete digestive tract, meaning there's a mouth and an anus, and then some sort of ventral contractile blood vessel, aka a heart in most organisms. And like I said, all of these things have to be present at some point in the life of the organism. So within phylum chordata, there are three different subphylums that we're going to talk about. So the first is probably my favorite, just because I think they're fun, is subphylum urochordata. And this means tail cord. So the reason for this, and these, you may look at them and think like, whoa, no, there's no way they're related, closer related to us than all these other animals we've talked about so far. They should be related to sponges, which could make sense at first glance. However, when they are larvae, they do have all of those chordate characteristics present. But then as they develop, 
and you'll see in this picture down here, they metamorphosize into the stationary or sessile organism. So as a larva, they're free swimming, they move around, but then eventually they attach to a substrate and they undergo this dramatic metamorphosis to turn into the sessile adult. And these are known as sea squirts or tunicates. And tunicates because they have like a tunic or a covering over them. The next is subphylum cephalochordata. So this just means head cord. So cephalo, you should know by now that that means head. But they are capable of swimming as well. But they're also usually buried with the rest of their body hidden, but their anterior end. But these look a little more like a fish or what you would assume is some sort of chordate. And they also have those chordate characteristics present throughout their lifetime. And an example here is a lancelet. Last up, we have subphylum craniata. And just as you can imagine, cranium skull, right? So these are all of your chordates that have a skull. And they have all those characteristics present throughout their lifetime. So this is going to lead us into the future units that we're going to do, where we're going to break down all of these different chordates that you see there in subphylum craniata. And that is all for your notes.